So my homemade lathe is coming along really nicely. I've got a bed and ways, a headstock, a spindle, and an eight-speed counter shaft. And the whole thing runs really smooth and nice, and I get the full selection of speeds I need for turning. I'm really excited about the way things are going. But even with all the work I've already done, I can't turn anything until I make a tool rest. And that's a little complicated. This is the tool rest on my cheap Harbor Freight lathe. And it's not like it's a new design or anything, but I really love the way that it works. It's got one lever right here that you loosen, and then you can move it in any direction you would really want to. It goes back and forth, it goes in and out, and you can also rotate it. And then all those directions of motion are instantly locked down when you hit that lever. That's really quite solid. And then if you need to adjust the actual tool rest part of it right here, it's just one screw and you can rotate and adjust the height and then lock that down easily and solidly as well. And I'm trying to make my lathe as close to a commercial lathe as possible. And for me, that means that my tool rest has got to move in all of these directions. It's got to go up and down, it's got to rotate, and I want all the directions of motion to be locked down with one quick flick of a lever. A lot like this one. So I basically want to duplicate all the functionality of this mass-produced, cast-ironed, machined one, but do it in my basement and make it out of wood. I think I need another cup of coffee. Most commercial lathes have a flat bed, and that gives you a flat surface for the tool rest to slide back and forth on. I've used pipe here, so I don't have that flat surface, and I need to create it. I also need to create something that's going to lock down on both sides of this pipe, so that when I need to lock the tool rest in place, it stays steady. So I'm going to start by cutting up a couple scrap pieces of three-quarter inch plywood and laminating them together. And those are going to give me my top and bottom pieces for the tool rest. I also need to make the bracket that holds the tool rest. This is usually called the banjo. I have no idea why. Even though the one on my commercial lathe is made of cast iron, it's probably a lot bigger and stronger than it needs to be. I think I can duplicate this out of hardwood and it'll hold up fine. So I grab a thick piece of ash. It's a particularly strong wood, and it should work well for this. I need to mill a slot all the way down the middle of the piece. And I could use a router for this, but that's going to be kind of a complicated setup. I'm not really sure if I have a cutter that's narrow enough, and I don't feel like it, frankly. So instead I'm going to use the bandsaw. Cutting out a shape just in the middle of something with the bandsaw is obviously tricky because you have to get into your cut somehow. Um, but I've actually found with a lot of things, you can just cut in through the good material to what you need to cut out. And then when you're done cutting out your central shape, whatever it is, you can just take your exit line and glue that shut and clamp it. And a lot of the time, that's going to be invisible and nobody will even know that you did it. To make the upright for the tool rest post, I take a piece of hard maple over to the belt sander and get it shaped up so it's going to be comfortable and not bang against my knuckles. Then I drill out a hole in the banjo, wax the threads on a screw, and screw the banjo and the upright piece together. The screw isn't going to stay, it's basically just there for a clamp. That's what the wax is for, so it'll back out again later. This is an end grain to face grain connection, so it has basically no strength on its own. Once I've got the screw in, I drill out to either side and glue in a pair of dowels and then flush cut them off. And those are going to act like loose tenons and provide all the actual strength for the joint. To make the actual tool rest, I grabbed a piece of white oak and cut a 45 degree angle along one edge. And then I took it over to the bandsaw and relieved some curves out of the bottom. I'd like to say this is to make it more ergonomic or to give me better clearance or whatever, but honestly, it's just so that it looks more like a commercial tool rest and less homemade. Once that piece was done, I needed a post to tie the whole thing together, and I grabbed a one half inch galvanized pipe nipple. I had it laying around and it definitely seemed strong enough for this, and it had a threaded end which really came in handy. I took my angle grinder and cut some channels perpendicular to the threads in a couple different places, and that made the threaded end of the pipe function a lot like a metal tap would, so that when I screwed it into the wood, it cut its own threads really easily, and as the hole continued and it approached the thicker part of the pipe, it jammed itself in there very solidly. I added a little super glue later, but I think just the interference fit is going to be enough to get this thing to hold really well. 
To protect the tool rest from damage, I grabbed a scrap of angle iron and screwed that to the top. And now I have pretty much the whole tool rest assembly and it looks like it's going to work great. To finish the platform for the ways, I grabbed the plywood I glued up before, took it to the table saw, and cut 45 degree channels that matched up with the pipes. And this let those pieces sit really nicely on those round ways. And I want them to be able to clamp tight, but also loosen so I can move it back and forth. So I decided to put hinges on one side. And I got part way through installing them when I figured out that since I had the pieces clamped down, the hinges were going to be set too tight. So I pulled the whole thing apart and just stuffed a couple pieces of thin cardboard in there to give me a little clearance. Then I finished installing the hinges and pulled the cardboard out and I had just the right fit where it could slide back and forth but also pull down tight when I needed it to. Now of course, you have to have some way to tighten down the stem of the tool rest so it doesn't swivel or move up and down. And I dug through the parts bin for a while and I just found this foot that I literally pulled off an easy chair on the way to work one day. It's just a hunk of wood with a machine bolt sticking out of it. And I searched through my tap and die set and I found the right size tap and I just tapped a hole in the side of the tool rest stem and ran the bolt in. And you might think this isn't going to hold up, but threads in a dense hardwood like maple, they actually hold up fine. They hold up for years, especially if you add a little bit of wax and just keep things lubricated. And if they ever break down, you can always just drill it out, put in a slug of new wood, retap it, and it'll last for years more. If you don't happen to have uh, an old piece of easy chair sitting around that you can use, it would probably be great just to take a long bolt and bend it at a 90 degree angle, and that would give you a lever that you could tighten. That should work great. So with all these different parts together and assembled, all I had to do was build a lever and a cam locking mechanism that would lock the whole thing in place and keep it from moving during turning. And a cam is a really simple mechanism and I've built them before so I was like, this is going to be really easy. It was not easy. It was actually a complete disaster. I made the first set of cams and they were too small. I made the second set of cams and they broke. Then on the third try I got the cam correct but then the lever snapped. So I made a bigger, beefier lever out of white oak, so that solved that problem. But then the nut that I have on my threaded rod was too small. It didn't have enough bearing surface, and so it couldn't keep the banjo from just rotating back and forth, even when it was at full tension. So I grabbed a piece of steel, drilled, and tapped a hole in that, added that to my threaded rod as the new nut, and the larger bearing surface of that, that locked everything down. So, now I'm good, right? Yeah, I wish. See this? See all that flex? That's not a good thing. If I can do that barehanded, then the stresses of turning and the workpiece coming around and hitting the tool into the tool rest, it's just going to snap it. But I designed and built the thing so carefully. Why is it so flexible? Well, I'll tell you why. So here are two banjos. This is the cast iron one that came with my commercial lathe, and this is the wooden one from my homemade lathe. Looking at these, you might notice something. They're very similar in construction. And that's a bad thing. Earlier on in the video, I said something about this cast iron one. Even though the one on my commercial lathe is made of cast iron, it's probably a lot bigger and stronger than it needs to be. Now that was a very stupid thing to say. Because this isn't overbuilt in the slightest. This is a Harbor Freight lathe. It's built to the minimum. So if I take this design in cast iron and copy it in wood, it's going to be a terrible design. Luckily, I have some advantages working in my favor. One of them is that I don't need to copy very much about this at all. In fact, there are very few things that the tool wrist needs to be. It needs to be kind of low profile so it doesn't cut down on the swing of the lathe. But aside from that, I have a huge amount of freedom. So instead of making this piece relatively narrow and short the way I have, I can make it much wider and much longer. And that's going to make it more rigid. Instead of hardwood, I'm going to use plywood. I'm also going to dig around and find the best plywood I have. What I've been using for this project so far is some very nice cabinet grade 7 ply plywood. And that's fine, but when I looked around, I found this amazing 12 ply Baltic birch plywood. It is significantly more rigid. So I'm going to make a longer and wider banjo out of that. Then, for this central post, instead of using a long piece of maple with an end grain connection, 
I'm going to stack up some pieces of face grain maple so that I have the best glue joint possible. I'm going to make them as wide as the banjo on the bottom, and then I'll just use my table saw in maybe a not well thought out cut. Uh, don't try that at home. But in the end, I end up with something that's got kind of a nice pyramid shape. It's much more sculpted, and it's got a wide base and way more wood, so it's just going to be a lot stronger. I also noticed that this tightening knob here is totally in the wrong place, and it gets in the way of the tool rest all the time. So on the new one, I'm going to swivel this around to the front corner, tap it, put that in, and then my whole new assembly is ready to go. And all of that is very nice. And altogether, it's given me a much sturdier, much stronger banjo and tool rest assembly. Except for one problem. I made this part out of maple. And there are two kinds of maple. Hard and soft. Would you like to guess which kind I used here? <sighs> so, I'm going to remake this part out of hard maple this time, glue it down, and lag bolt it to the banjo. And here, finally, is the completed tool rest. With the maple support that I built in here, I no longer have those flexing problems that I was having before. I've also relocated this knob so that it's out of my way, but it's very easy to move the tool rest around, get it at whatever height I need it to be, and then tighten it down for a very secure hold. So I'm happy with that. While we're looking at this here, let me show you how the whole mechanism actually functions. This underside lever is attached to my cam mechanism. When it's in the up position here and the cam is disengaged, my two plywood platforms are loose and they're not actually pinching against the ways. And in this setup, I can move it in any direction that I want to on the ways of the lathe and locate it wherever I need to for turning. Also, because of the way it's constructed, when the lever is disengaged, the banjo is free to move in any direction. And when the lever is engaged again, it's all set. And so everything locks in together at the same time by pulling on a single lever. Now on the underside there, you might have noticed another addition that I made, which is that white plate underneath the cam. And what I realized was with a wooden cam and a wooden carriage, there was way too much friction between the two parts. It made a terrible noise every time I engaged the cam, and I was worried that over time those parts were going to wear against each other too much and mess up the whole mechanism. So I cut a little 4x4 piece of polyethylene plastic and screwed it to the underside. And that really cuts down on friction, but polyethylene is also a relatively tough material, and it's going to take all of that force without breaking down the way the plywood was going to. Now, I know what you're saying. Um, Rex, I don't have sheets of polyethylene sitting around my shop, so what the hell am I supposed to do about friction with my cam? And that's no problem. Just go down to the dollar store and buy a super cheap kitchen cutting board. They're all made of polyethylene. They cost a dollar or two, and this much will take you through several projects. It's the same stuff I used, just in a different form. So now the real lathe is really coming together. I've got a completed headstock and spindle that's capable of eight different speeds, and a tool rest that's fully adjustable and locks down really solidly. I'm almost finished with the machine. I know I could probably turn something on it right now, but I really want to finish the tool rest first. I want to get the entire machine built so I can spend a week or two refining and debugging it before I release the plans. Anytime you're building a machine like this, you've got to set aside time for troubleshooting because things are going to go wrong. Before I go, it's getting to be winter time, and I know it's not really t-shirt weather anymore, so I just got some hoodies in to my online store. They're made and printed in America, just like my t-shirts, and they're made of excellent quality materials. So you can go to rexkruger.com store and pick up a t-shirt. It's a huge help to the channel, and I'm selling quality clothing that you can feel good about wearing. It's also really important for me to mention that none of these videos would be possible without my patrons on Patreon. These people really make it possible for me to make this content and give it away. So if you feel like you can kick in a couple dollars, go over to patreon.com slash rexkruger and check out all the rewards and early access that I have available to my patrons. It's also been a while since I've thanked my new patrons, so let me take this opportunity to give my warmest thanks to Carl Anderson, Stanley Thigpen, Eric Grab, Tom Masters, RJ Langlis, Steve Crane, Matthew Wedgwood, The Lazy A-Hole Ranch, <laughs> and Zachary Ungari. Thank you guys so much for all your help. And for everybody else, I'll see you next Monday with the completed real lathe. Thanks for watching.